Good morning, uh, mga kabayan. Nandito tayo sa Live on Congress Conference. Yan. So, nandito na rin si Mix Nograles. panelists uh, followed by our regular question and answer and then um, let's start with the uh, deputy majority leader janet garin uh, before that uh, uh, our guests are deputy majority leader in the league of first district representative janet algarin committee on muslim affairs chairman and land of the northern first district representative muhammad khalid timaporo committee on housing and urban development chairman and negros occidental third district representative francisco kiko Benitez, Deputy Majority Leader and PBA Party List Representative Margarita Ignacia Attorney Migs Nograles, and Taguig City 2nd District Representative Amparo Maria Pami Zamora. Uh, DML uh, Janet. Magandang umaga sa lahat. Narilito ulit, na, narilito ulit kami. Maraming salamat sa invitasyon. And I'll give the floor to the younger ones to make their opening statement. Uh, magandang umaga po sa mga kaibigan natin sa press, sa media. Andito po kami lima para sagutin ang inyong mga katanungan uh, pat patungkol sa kung ano man ang mga latest sa balita at sa mga ginagawa namin dito sa House of Representatives. Maraming salamat po. And Ramadan Mubarak, for our friends in the media, and uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, I hope today's discussion or Q&A will be fruitful and beneficial to the Filipino people. And I'd like to thank everybody for their time and patience for waiting for us here. Uh, good morning to our friends from the media. Uh, usually, the young ones choose things, so we are driving back uh, to <laughs> three of our young fans members. Um, but uh, first time, uh, at least because of my little and looking forward to a very uh, fruitful discussion. Uh, I think this is the first time I have joined uh, this press con. Uh, but I think our friends in the media do know and realize that this has been a very hard-working uh, house for representatives, and I think it really is part of our uh, obligation you know, to the people of the Philippines to also be able to convey to them the type of things that the work in the house, in fact, also entails. So, magandang umaga po, and I look forward to uh, hearing your questions. 
Thank you. Uh, Mela Desmoras from Chandapur for uh, your questions. Hi, good morning po mga Kongs. Uh, two session days na lang, Holy Week break na ng camera. So may question is for uh, Congressman Gary, but others can also answer. Ano na po kaya yung planong uh, ipasa ng uh, camera? And uh, kasi sa Senate naman po, sabi naman ni uh, Senator Angara, sila daw magpukukos sila sa legat fields at uh, sa yung madi-refer muli discussions on economic amendments until mag-resume ang uh, session sa April 29. May I also get your thoughts on this? Na natapos natin on second reading, yung RBH 7 or the economic chat siya, um, most probably in the next two days, you'll be able to finish it on third reading. And um, well, I do respect the Senate na ipapagpaliban mo na yung econ chat siya, uunahin yung MEDA. Um, this brings us to the issue of ano ba ang priority? Kasi sa pananaw ng Kongreso, priority Lahat eh. Lahat ng leda plus the econ chacha. Kasi bawat araw, bawat minuto, bawat buwan, at magiging taon yan, at aabutan niya ng eleksyon, that we are going to delay economic chacha. Eh lalo natin, pinapabagal ang pagundan ng Pilipinas. So, I still have hope in the Senate, na alam ko naman mga hardworking naman silang lahat, magdodobo tayo sila, na unahin talaga yung napaka-importante paano ka lang batas na ito. Dahil hindi ito para sa amin mga politiko. This is a very important step that we need to take boldly as a legacy to our children's children. Uh, thank you. Um, and that's a nice question because it brings into focus the urgency of RBH 6 and 7 and the remaining LEDAC bills. Here, the House of Representatives, we completed 57 of the LEDAC measures. In the Senate, uh, I think we still have 33 for them to tackle of the 57 that we've completed and passed on third reading. Um, not, uh, and then on top of that, we have the RBH, which uh, is more than likely going to be passed on third reading, RBH 7, this afternoon or before we adjourn. Now, if you think about it, when we adjourn, we return on a month. We only think we have one month. Then we have a long break. Then it's SONA. After SONA, it's budget. And we're all very busy with the budget. Come October, we'll be filing for, the, for our candidacies. So we really only have until the SONA to get all of this done as legislators. After the SONA, the circus is in town again. And we'll be campaigning. And, you know. So I really hope, and I have faith in the Senate, they are, you know, an independent institution. But I really hope that this is not dribble, dribble politics. Because at the very least, the Filipino voters deserve to know how our senators stand. It's not busy, busy, busy coming. We need to know where does Senator Bato stand when it comes to the issue of nationalizing, you know, anti opening up RBH 6 or RBH 7 will negatively affect our nationalist ideals. He used to be our chief PNP. Where does uh, Senator Robin Padilla stand? He's a staunch uh, nationalist uh, you know, figure, uh, proudly Filipino. When it comes to that type of debate that we're having here in the House of Representatives, where does uh, Senator Pia Cayetano stand when it comes to, for example, the education sector being opened up to uh, foreigners. She comes, uh, she's a product of UP system, for example. Uh, Filipino voters need to know exactly where their senators stand. So at the very least, I hope they bring it to the plenary and bring it to a vote before this one comes. But the urgency is there. We take a break, one month is gone, then we'll only have one month of work to do. And there are, the Senate is 33 led up measures, measures short of the House of Representatives. Quick follow-up. Yeah, I, can, can I add to that? Um, sa Congreso kasi, even if it's a break, committee hearings continue. Lalo-lalo um, na kapag ito ay may inipa kay Juan at kay Maria de la Cruz. So, I'm still very hopeful that Senate will stick to its word na itatakal nila ang RBH 6, which is the counterpart of RBH 7, o yung tinatawag natin economic chacha ang batas na magbibigay ng flexibility sa likahon natin konstitusyon para magkaroon 
ng daan na umakto agad-agad ang Kongreso at Senado sa bawat problema ng taong bayan. Uulitin natin, ang panukalang batas na ito is all about flexibility. Nakakahon tayo ngayon, hindi ka makagalaw. Parang kumbaga wala pang cellphone sa panahon na ginawa yun, wala pang data, wala pang IT, marami ang wala dati na yun ang naging basehan ng batas natin. We are very restricted, nakakahon tayo, hindi siya flexible. And if we fail to give that flexibility, at ulitin natin na, hindi ibig sabihin na kapag ipinasang economic chat siya, eh agad-agad magbabago ito. Dadaan ito ng plebisito kung saan ang taong bayan ang maghuhusga. Kapag ito ay naaprubaran ng mayorya ng Pilipino sa pamamagitan ng plebisito, Congress and Senate will now take it one by one, providing a stepping stone. Kunyari, pag-usapan natin yung edukasyon, may eksperto tayo dito, pag-usapan natin yung public utilities, pag-usapan natin yung logistics, transport sector, isa-isa yung itatakal ng Senado at ng Kongreso sa paraan ng legislation. So hindi totoo na mawawalan ng kamay ang gobyerno dito. So now we go back. Is it an urgent matter? Is it a need? Klarong-klaro naman po na talagang kailangan ito ng taong bayan. Kasi habang pinapatagal natin na ipasa ang RDH 6, ay lalo natin sinasabing magtiis ang mga Pilipino sa mahal ng bilihin. Bakit ito nagiging mahal? Dahil hindi tayo nagpapapasok ng logistics sa Pilipinas. At ano ang impact nito? Lahat ng bagay-bagay na galing sa ibang bansa, na raw material ng ating pangangailangan, or finished product na kailangan natin, pagkain man ito, bahay man ito, damit man ito, sa araw-araw natin pangangailangan, ang pag-ikot niya sa Pilipinas is triple the cost. Kaya, handed down yan. Ito yung isang pangunahing tinutugunan ng chacha, ng economic chacha. Buksan ang Pilipinas, tanggalin ang dekahon, make it flexible. Flexible for what? Para kapag may problema, action agad ang gobyerno. So I really can see the logic why Senate is delaying this matter. Because the primary responsibility of Senate and Congress is to work hard, work double time, regardless of schedule. Kasi utang natin sa taong bayan ang ating obligasyon. Can I, can I also just clarify my statement earlier? When I said that there's a sense of urgency, you have to also understand how both houses work. Dito sa Congress, the hard work is in the committee. And when it comes to plenary, most of the time it's passed. In the Senate, balik that, the committee is supposed to be the faster one kasi actually normally it's a one chairman committee. No? And then in the plenary, it's not like here where we're being regulated for time management purposes. In the Senate, as you know, uh, as long as you want, debate, 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 interpolate. So the question is, when will RDH 6 or 6 in the Senate reach the plenary level? And it's good that uh, Senate, uh, that uh, Representative Garin mentioned it. Senator Angara can work on it during the break. And what we hope to see is that the Senate is tackling it in the plenary before the next one. Otherwise, it will be too late. Are there any comments from other guests? Okay. Quick follow-up lang po about uh, sa sinabi ni Congarin. So, uh, given na uh, halos tapos nyo na nga po yung mga LEDAC and other priority bills, uh, sa mga susunod, ano po kaya yung dapat i-look forward? Ano, parang uh, dahil tapos na lahat, ano pa po kaya yung gagawin? Parang wala na bang gagawin ng kamera? Ano pa po kaya yung pagpupokus na nyo? Pagdating naman, even after the break? Well, the... The oversight powers of Congress is a very, very clear mandate, mandato na para matingnan natin kung nagiging epektibo ba yung budget ng Pilipinas, kung nagiging epektibo ba yung mga batas na ginawa natin. Kaya nga, isegway ko lang ng konti, no? kasi natutuwa tayo sa bilis no? ng uh, galaw ng Department of Social Welfare and Development. Natutunan yung pangangat. Kailangan na. No, but uh, my test, my test. My test, that's okay. Uh -huh.
Okay, balikan lang natin. Ang daming mga bagay-bagay na kailangan tugunan ng Kongreso. Yung Department of Social Welfare and Development. Alam naman natin na matagal na nagiging usapin yung four P's. At nagkaralihan sa kanila. Okay. May test Jingle bells, Balik tayo, no? Eh, sinabi ko lang yun kasi minsan sa hirap man, kailangan ang bawat pamilya Pilipino sa damdamin at sa isip nila, ramdam nila na Pasko ang nasa loob ng kanilang tahanan. Pero sa dami ng problema, syempre imposible ito. Kaya kapareho nung nakikita natin sa Department of Social Welfare and Development. Alam ng karamihan niyan, meron ng ibang mga alikasyon, yung iba humingin tunas sa trabaho kasi gusto na lang nila yung ayuda. And this is being taken seriously by Congress. Nakita kasi natin, isipin mo meron pang, may teacher tayo, magkano ang sweldo ng teacher? Sabihin natin, sumisweldo siya ng 20,000. May apat na anak yan. Eh kung ang kaniyang yaya ay susweldohan mo ng minimum wage na 12,000, eh may iwan sa sweldo niya, ay kulang pa sa pagkakin nila. Kaya, aminin man natin o hindi, at alam din ang Senado yan, Maraming nagtatrabaho ang Pilipino ang hindi nakakaabot dun sa minimum wage, especially if they do it out of service. Yung nagiging katulong sa isang bahay ng ating health worker. Yung nagiging yaya or caregiver ng mga matatandang retirado ng empleyado ng gobyerno. At dito nga, kinonceptualize yung ACAP. Na yung ACAP ay pangtawid pamilya dun sa mga nagtatrabaho pero kulang ang kanilang kinikita. At yun namang mga employer na nagsisweldo ng kanilang mga empleyado, pero kahit anong gawin nila, ay hindi nila kaya ang minimum wage. Or kung hanggang dyan na lang. And that paved way actually, well, ikinakalukot natin na nagkaroon siguro ng miscommunication and it ended up with allegations and plans to have it investigated. Pero again, this delay Sino ba ang nag-suffer? Yung ating mga minimum wage earners or those below the minimum wage who should have benefited from this. Ito yung mga bagay no, na pinapasok na natin, yung oversight powers ng Congress. Kasi hindi din naman talaga dapat na pag hindi ka nagtatrabaho or wala kang trabaho, bigay ng bigay ang gobyerno. Tama naman yan, pero meron niyang hangganan. Hindi ba mas kailangan idagdag na natin magtrabaho ka, Dahil sa pagtrabaho at pagsisipal mo, ay tutulungan ka ng gobyerno. And that's one of the thrusts that Congress pursued para nga mabigyan ng mas masaganang buhay ang pamilyang Pilipino where they can feel that government is helping them as long as they also keep on helping themselves. Maybe the... <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to also add, um, uh, I think with the LEDEC measures finally completed, we can hear here in the House focus on local bills. Because that's of the utmost important to, or importance to most of us here in the House of Representatives, the mga local needs ng mga constituents now. And secondly, we also have other tasks. Uh, one of the tasks that I've been um, um, assigned to uh, by the Speaker is in EDCOM 2. So we'll be digging deep into the problems of the Bangsamon Autonomous Region and their problems with that education, why we have the poorest of the poor in terms of performance when it comes to uh, uh, education uh, statistics and indicators. And uh, our chair, our chair, uh, Chair Roman, uh, wants to set up a subcommittee to properly tackle this, uh, this uh, problem. So this is something that we'll be working on after, after the break. 
but I would like to turn it over to my co-ed com too. <laughs> so the spotlight can shine on him, uh, Pico Benitez, because he's actually an expert in one of the many things that we've been trying to tackle on, and that's the inability for DepEd, ESDA, and CHED to get their acts together. So you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Comcari. You do have two EDCOM members here from Congress uh, in front of you, no? Um, <clears throat> but to first answer the question from Andrew Pang, sa totoo lang, meron pang tatlong natitirang na LEDAC measures no? na, na kailangan pang tapusin ng, ng lower house. But tatapusin naman siguro, malapit na silang, malapit na kaming matapos sa committee at least on these sets of issues. The second is the ongoing um, issue of uh, oversight. Kasi sa oversight lang, uh, kagaya ng EDCOM, halimbawa, marami mong lumilitaw na problema na hindi generally nakakapture no? in the normal years uh, legislative process. Um, so sa EDCOM pa lang, uh, sa totoo lang, uh, BARM as uh, Kong Khalid, uh, uh, Commissioner of EDCOM has also mentioned, uh, is a major issue um, for us uh, in terms of education. Uh, but also internationalization of uh, higher education is another major issue. No, um, nabalik ko lang dun sa issue ng uh, RBH7 and I think the general um, concern no, about education. Malinaw naman sa amendment na proposed na carved out and protectado ang basic education. It's really tertiary education that's being opened up. And the issue in tertiary education, I think, um, is really not about ownership, but it's about regulation. So, tama din si Kong Janet, no? that at least with the amendment, the questions of regulation can emerge, and Congress can properly tackle uh, that issue with greater flexibility. No? Um, wala pang malinaw na position ng EDCOM sapagkat uh, as part of EDCOM's law, kailangan evidence-based um, policy recommendations nila. So, pinag-aaralan pa lang, and that's going to be part of the second year of EDCOM's oversight. No? Um, so, there are many issues and many legislations that uh, still need study beyond or outside uh, LEDAC priorities. For example, uh, the lower house passed on uh, third reading the new uh, early Childhood Care and Development Act you know, that, that tries to address a uh, consistent uh, national problem of uh, malnutrition and stunting for children five and below, for example, right? and aligning it with uh, deaf ed uh, school readiness uh, competencies. Sa housing, meron din kami pinag-uusapan ngayon uh, with regards to the NHA charter renewal and the institutionalization of 4PH and finance re reform. No? So, ano lang ma'am, just to respond to the question quite directly. Obviously, we have issues with regards to oversight that will continue even after we finish the NEDAC priorities. Um, we have issues of local bills that still need uh, legislation and those continue as the needs of our uh, local constituents you know, change and emerge over time. And the third is there are still bills of national importance that are not included in the LEDAC priority but are nonetheless important for Juan and anong pang, anong, na, 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 Maria. Mo, Maria de la Cruz. And, Juan de la Cruz and Maria de la Cruz, no, na importante pa rin sa mga taong bayan na kailangan din namin gawin. No? Uh, so, hindi naman ho yung TTG. Hindi naman ho totoo na wala na kami gagawin. No? And that will still be on top of, as Kong Khalid has already said, magdadagdag po kasi October filing na. No? So, dagdag ho yan sa trabaho namin. Um, yun na lang siguro muna ang... ang um, response, no? there are out of the oversight function, marami pong lumilitaw na kailangan ayusin pa no? and in terms of uh, legislation and policy direction. That Congress, and certainly this Congress, has not shied away no, from dealing with. Um, 
Siguro, just to add to that, I think it's a very unfair statement to say, wala na kami gagawin. <laughs> Hindi po na natapos yung trabaho natin. Even when there were led up measures that we were tapping, there were still other committee hearings ongoing. There were still committee hearings ongoing right now. Uh, as of now also, uh, pinag-uusapan yung other led up measures na uh, ipapasok sa Congress that like, uh, they create more is being discussed. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are about 10,000 bills that have been filed by various Congress, 10,000 plus. So hindi po matatapos yan. Uh, and we are all trying our best na, diba, to hear the various uh, local bills, national bills, um, all other uh, bills that we have in the hat, no? So uh, the work never stops. Even on day to Wednesday, we are here. We are here in the province of the different congressmen to call us and to support us in the other places. You know, the work really never stops. Even during the break, Jan, we uh, mas, mas ng oras to be with uh, various constituents. So I, I, I think it's a very unfair statement to say, uh, wala na po kami na. Yun na po. Um, magandang umaga po. Um, Tama si Congresswoman uh, Migs na sinabi niyang unfair. Kasi habang nababalita lang sa sa TV at sa Jario yung RBH7, napakarami po talaga namin ginagawa. Sabay-sabay po yung mga committee meetings namin. In fact, this week, hindi lang naman po RBH7 ang pinasa namin, ang ipapasa namin. May 45 local and national bills po na papasa ngayong linggo. So, kung naipagsasabay-sabay po namin yon, siguro naman po, malinaw na sabihin, hindi lang naman namin pinaglaanan ng pansin yung RDH7. Sabay-sabay po, kinakaya po namin lahat. Maraming salamat po. Sorry, at um, <clears throat> isingit ko na lang din po, uh, other topic, um, isang uh, mabilis lang. Sa isang speech ni President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr., ipinagmalaki niya yung uh, lower crime rate. Lower crime rate niya yun at bumaba din yung... Uh, sa isang speech po ni President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr., ipinagmalaki niya yung lower crime rate at bumaba din yung uh, human rights violations ngayon. At uh, sabi nga niya, we have done it without resorting to legal shortcuts or short uh, circuiting the process or acts that subvert the rule of law. In short, parang hina-highlight nga niya na kaya naman to ng uh, non-violent or bloodless campaign. May I know your action, please? Well, um, I think uh, for me, uh, well, we'd like to congratulate again the President on um, his achievement in making improvements from the previous administration when it comes to human rights uh, um, abuses and also the main uh, criminal indexes. No? And I think that attributes to his background as a former local chief executive. When it comes to crime, you, uh, as a president, I feel you need to have a strong bond with your mayors and the governors. And I think that's one of the advantages or assets that uh, President BBM has. Um, in this uh, this uh, this administration, uh, he has a very clean and a very good relationship with our local chief executives. And uh, any problems in the LGU level, he tries his best to resolve. And uh, what's critical here is uh, in term in, in part in the part of criminality is the uh, is the um, are the uh, the police directors uh, for my part the provincial director and the general tone that he sets. He wants international standards. He doesn't want abuse of law. Uh, and he wants us to be an example when it comes to the, our in the international community on how we safeguard the rights of uh, his, the Filipino citizens. So I think that's a general tone that he has. And it cascades down to the police. And with this good relationship with the mayors and the governors, he was able to achieve this very nice uh, achievement, which is improved uh, um, statistics when it comes to crime. Okay, sorry. 
Um, I think in addition to that, we should be very clear that the balancing act that the president mentioned actually helps strengthen our institutions, our democratic institutions as well. No, na pwede namang palakasin ang ating mga demokrasya, institusyong ang demokrasya, kasabay ng uh, karapatang pantao, as well as uh, peace and order at the same time. Um, that kind of balancing act is not easy. No? So I, I, I suspect Kong Khalid is correct, and I would like to uh, echo it, that it probably comes from the president's own uh, background and experience as a local chief executive. Let me add to that. We congratulate the administration of TBDM for the bloodless campaign on uh, implementing laws. While uh, the former president probably had his uh, um, goals, no, yung kanyang uh, ginaing at yung kanyang namang intention ay mabuti, the problem with um, like looking, uh, seeing children or teenagers or people being killed right and left, yung mga nakabalot ng mga tape, medyo masamang picture kasi siya na ipinakita sa Pilipinas. So there are, well, the intention of the former president is to curb um, drug abuse. Nakikita mo kasi medyo maliliit yung mga natamaan. At ang pinakamasakit dito, yung ako, yung nanay rin, so we all have children. Alam naman natin that when that happens, when you tolerate that kind of act, dalawang pwede mangyari. Impunity, yung mga nasa baba, o yung mga implementors ay pwede umabuso. At pangalawa dyan, syempre, ano yan, dagok sa turismo. So if we talk about tourism being hit, because how can you invite tourists to come here when you see all over the newspapers na puro patayan ang nangyayari? So talagang deterrent siya na hindi siya nakakapaangat na ekonomiya ng Pilipinas. Now, let's talk about impunity. Yes, maganda ang hangarin ng ating dating Pangulo, pero pagdating kasi sa baba, marami kasi mga marites sa Pilipinas. Kunyari, pag initan yung iyong anak, or intriga, or itaybirth sa isang teenager, sometimes, na-stereotype eh. May tatu lang, sasabihin ka agad na adik. No? Medyo hindi lang ganun kapogi at kaganda, sasabihin ka agad na adik. So, <coughs> mind you, when we were doing a, a study on HIV patients, sa Pilipinas, napakalakas ng stigma na kapag ikaw ay hindi gaano mapute, flawless, hindi ka mestisa, positive ka. Kapag ikaw ay maganda, bata, ang ganda ng balat, swak na swak yung makeup, negative ka sa HIV. But it's actually not the truth. And dami young professionals who turn out positive because they really didn't understand how to protect themselves. Ganito rin ang nangyari sa drug campaign. Na kapag ikaw ay medyo out of school, or medyo nagkukunting bulakbol, pwede kang pag-initan sa baba. So you become a diversion of those who have impunity at ang nagiging kawawa nun, yung mga tao sa baba. So we congratulate the current administration in its bloodless campaign. But of course, we also have to make sure that rules and laws are implemented. Kasi minsan, kung puro tayo patayan, tinatanggalan mo ng karapatan na magkaroon ng boses ang maliliit na tao. And this is very hurtful to parents like us. Uh, siguro to add na lang to um, all that has been mentioned. No? Um, well, as, as a lawyer also, syempre, kahit hindi naman ako ganda, dapat naman, you don't take the laws into your own hands. You do not violate the, the laws. Dapat, so, nakakatuwa, and congratulations to this administration for doing that. Na, kaya naman pala, di ba? And makikita natin na uh, kung walang gulo, walang krimen, di ba? Peaceful. Kung mas ma-prioritize natin, ano bang nakakabuti? sa taong bayan. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And at least now, di ba, ang kita natin hindi galit talaga mga tao, walang krimen, walang gulo. We can hopefully work together in a peaceful country. And uh, kami, dito sa Kongreso, uh, mas talaga makakapokus kami lahat, tayo lahat, uh, sa kung ano pwede natin maggawa para ibalik sa taong bayan. Thank you.
Hello, dia ke Adam, ada kasus. Tapi saya minta berapa net banyak baik. Good morning, Bob. Mom Janet, just a quick follow-up lang doon sa issue ng ACAP. So ano na pong status doon ngayon? Kasi nung na-delay siya, tapos na ba yung implementing guidelines noon para ipatupad ng DSW? As far as I know, nagkaroon na siya ng guidelines. Pero yun nga, nung kagabi ay pakainvestiga doon ng Senado, um muna. I'm not sure, but I believe the guidelines are already out. At um, we're, we're really looking forward that this be implemented. Kasi kagaya sa distrito ko, maraming mga katulong or marami yung mga utility o yung mga labandera na hindi na nila maiwanan o yung caregivers na hindi nila maiwanan yung kanilang mga alaga. Pero minimum wage sila or even below the minimum wage. So the ACA program is geared to address 12 million families. Supposedly, the target is 60 million, pero kulang yung ponto. Kaya the earlier we implement it, lalo na wala pa yung tag-init, at pag nagkawag ulit ng tag-init, eh, marami ang, uh, let's say, among farmers, medyo mabigat, no? Marami nagkakasakit, marami ang nasisira. Yung crops, hindi ganun. Ang pangingisda lang yung hindi ganun masyado na affected. So, the impact on the people in the rural areas will be, uh, will be doubled or even tripled. Kaya mas kailangan ipasatupad na ito. Okay. Going back to economic cha-cha, may we know the uh, plan B of the House of Representatives kasi mukha yatang yung window of opportunity ay papasaran na kasi kahit na sa inyo po sa mababang kapulungan ng Kongreso, Mailusot nyo man yung RBH number 7, pero yung sa Senado mukhang ang priority nila lahat yung LEDAC ka na kung saan eh, deficit sila. So, what will happen if and when na mabigo ang Senado on or before the SONA ma-approvahan ang RBH 7? May sinabi si Majority Leader, pag tinapos ninyo yung RBH 7, Diretso na sa COMELEC, pero sigurado mayroong legal questions. Um, let, me, let me just put the statement of the majority leader category, Kalino. Kasi ang ibig din naman sabihin, pag natapos yung RBH-7 na idiretso sa COMELEC, he was actually referring to Senate as staying true to its words. Yung panilindigan nila, yung sinasabi nila, kapag nagmimiting ang liderato ng Senado at ang liderato ng Kongreso, kung saan sinabi na by March, tatapos din nila yung RBH 6. So the House is uh, geared towards adapting the Senate version. Although kulang yun, that's a lot better than nothing. So yan yung intention ng ating majority leader. Plan B, as of now, wala kami alam na plan B kasi sa pagkakaintindi namin, naniniwala pa rin kami na sinsero ang Senado sa kanilang tungkulin sa taong bayan. Maybe what is best to discuss now is kung ayaw nilang talakayin ang RBH 6. Bakit? And I believe it's best to call a spade a spade. Kung ayaw, sabihin nila. Kung gusto naman, edi pag-usapan. Because mahirap yung sinasabi mong okay pag-uusapan pero ayaw naman. We, we really have to be very transparent to our people because we need the people to know what is in there for their future. Personally, alam ko walang plan B, pero ko ako yung tatanungin nyo. We really need the people's initiative. Kung ang ginagawa natin ay hindi totoong cha-cha at trasabande kasi Diba? So we move a few steps forward, we move several steps backward. Ang tingin ko merong iba na mga nagdadasal lang na makalimutan yung usaping economic cha-cha pagdating ng kampanya. But Congress, me, me, myself, me personally, ang Kongreso, hindi yan papayagan. I mean, kung hindi man kaya niyo ng Kongreso, let the people judge our government officials. No? But uh, it's really best that Congress sticks 
spoke that the Senate stick to its commitment of tackling RDH6 within the month of March. Yeah, yun, ulitin ko ha, walang plan B sa pagkakaalam namin, pero ako, personal ko lang na pananaw yan. Kung talagang ayaw ng Senadong gumalaw, let's give it to the people. Ibalik natin sa People's Initiative dahil kami at ang mga senador, pareho kaming wala dito kapag wala ang boses ng taong bayan. Uh, senior Deputy Speaker, So, is it safe to say now, when uh, regards to the situation on uh, the economic cha-cha with the uh, mabagal na action ng Senado, is it safe to say that the House of Representatives is uh, hope against hope tayo? Hopeful. We're still hopeful, no? And I might be wrong, but the reason that the Senate is taking it with a slow stride eh baka tinitingnan nila kung naiintindihan na ba talaga ng taong bayan yung tunay na kapakanan ng economic cha-cha. Because when the members of Congress during the committee deliberation as a committee of the whole, started deliberating, marami ang nakarinig, marami ang nakaintindi, at pa konti konti bubukas yung isipan ng taong bayan sa economic cha-cha. I believe this is the trigger that Senate is waiting. Kasi nga politically, they will always side by what is popular. And that is something that we respect. Kaya nga, kung talakayin ng Senado yon kami naman dito sa Kongreso, ay lalabas sa amin mga distrito para ipaunawa sa taong bayan na economic cha-cha ay hindi pamulitika. Ang economic cha-cha ay pagbukas ng dekahon ng konstitusyon para maging flexible. Ano po ba ang flexibility? Kapag may problema ang taong bayan, Action agad ang gobyerno. Yan lang ang gusto ng economic cha-cha. And I will pray every day that the Senate takes away that fear. Kasi as of this point of time, I still cannot hear the exact reasons why they are not tackling RBH 6. Siguro, isang-isa na lang. Since nabanggit po ninyo yung reaction po ninyo doon sa image ng Pilipinas during the past administration with regards doon sa fight against sa uh, illegal drugs yung kong tokang na nagbigay ng masamang imahay sa atin compared ngayon sa Marcos administration na medyo okay kaya pala na hindi daanin sa parahas o kaya magkaroon ng human rights violations so the ICC ngayon nagpupumilit makapasok sa atin Susuportahan niyo ba na dapat papasokin ang ICC sa Pilipinas in order to remove that bad image sa atin at makita yun through their investigation? I leave it to the decision makers. No? Kasi alam naman natin, pag walang tinatago, walang dapat na ikapahama. Uh, Ersan Kismore from Manila Bulletin, you're recognized. po um, morning tama morning pa uh, clarification po kay Congarin ma'am you mentioned po kanina na in the next one or two days may mga marami pang pending so does that mean may session po tayo ng Thursday ayaw <laughs> <laughs> sorry na nawala sa isip ko Tuesday na pala ngayon so it's a session you'll be until tomorrow just making sure na po uh, tapos <laughs> <laughs> Tapos sa uh, for anybody po, do you share po the concern of the Makabayan Block na yung pong pagpili ni Pastor Tiboloy kay former President Duterte as his assets administrator slash caretaker could lead to some ano, uh, money laundering issues? That's how they put it. Uh, your thoughts po? If, if I could clarify uh, um, during the committee on legislative franchise when this was brought up um, sa process sa pagbili ng administrator. Uh, Ginaroon naman po nila na yes, may profiles on appointment 
pero it's only in case of inability. Meaning, hindi pa siya operative ngayon. So, um, I think it's premature to talk about that. But being a lawyer, diba, if they can prove their facts that's there, opinion naman ko nila yun. And there are various legal means and there are various processes that they can um, look into or bring forth. Uh, pero iklaro muna natin na yun na, yun naman yung lumabas sa committee hearing na as of now, uh, hindi naman pala talaga siya o oh, ang uh, administrator, just in case lang, uh, uh, incapable to manage the assets uh, si Pastor. Kunting dagdag lang, I believe this is the statement from the Makabayan Black, tama po na. Yes. Uh -huh. Ando doon yung fear nila na baka mag-lead ito sa money laundering. Now, the best person to answer that issue should be the former president. Maganda rin talaga lumabas mo si former president at sagutin niya ah, bakit naging ganito. I mean, as a lawyer himself who has also been a former prosecutor, siguro alam niya yung reasons. Kasi nagkaroon naman ng inferiors to the makabayan black, I believe they also had this confusion because it was all out in mid game na-announce kasi na siya na magiging tagapag, tagapagmahala. Tagapa, taga, tagamahala. Taga, he will be the fear teacher. Bisaya. Kung kung sa Bisaya pa, siya ang kanang muasikaso. O, muasikaso sa tanan na assets sa SNNI. Well, personally, I, I myself, as a politician, is quite surprised with that bold act. Kasi, Siyempre, may investigasyon, may mga alegasyon ng, um, let's say, tax evasion or ill-gotten wealth or whatever the sources of the uh, money of the businesses of uh, the executive pastor of Ibuloy. Um, magugulat ka, why get a former president? So, w what's the direction? Is it because um, he can have a hand on, actually lang sa totoo nga, as of this point of time, we really don't know how much in terms of monetary value is the available cash and asset of Pastor Kibuloy, um, considering that he has been a religious leader internationally for a long time. So, andun ba yung fear? Now, there are cases, not in the Philippines, but abroad, related, related to this. Siguro dyan nang gagaling yung konteksto ng statement ng makabayan. But again, ang hirap eh, kasi nagulat din lahat bakit former president ang magiging administrator. Kasi during the incumbency of former president Duterte, alam naman niya na meron ng mga kaso ang Amerika o kung ibang bansa pa yun, I believe uh, may mga na-hold din ng mga empleyado. So medyo masalimuot. So getting a former president as a possible administrator of your properties and your wealth can be misconstrued as hiding something. Kasi you have to get somebody powerful to do that. So, siguro nahiya lang din si PRRD at tinanggap niya either nahiya siya na sabihin hindi o kung he's doing it as a friend or he's doing it as a lawyer. So, all of these questions can properly be answered by the former president. Para naman, mawala na itong mga lumabas na um, pangamba ng makabayan black. Anybody else for me? Thank you, Pak Rina. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Earl Tobias from IBC 13. Samsa. <laughs> good afternoon to our good congressman and congresswoman. Um, sa akin lang po, the House leadership uh, has also been uh, very committed into um, tackling po yung NFA issue natin. No? Uh, as of now, Ombudsman ay nakatutok rin po dito and it's uh, marami pa pong mga nangyayaring uh, development with the issue. Uh, given now we're looking forward with what's happening next year and baka in-anticipate din po ba natin na ito ay magiging isa sa mga malaking priority ng Kamara uh, bilang pagtugon po doon sa function nitong NFA at what does it mean din po para sa ating taong bayan na maayos itong issue na ito. Thank you. Uh, 
obviously, I think the first issue um, has been, at least in the last year and a half, that uh, food inflation has been one of the highest, you know, and it was one of the biggest, almost, I would think, if I remember correctly, 50% contribution to our inflation. I think it was 50%. So anything that you can do to address food security and food inflation will be down to benefits to our uh, people. No? Um, so now, uh, my hearing then a discussion on uh, minimum wage hikes and so on and so forth. Ang nagtutulak ko niyan ay pangangailangan ng taong bayan sapagkat may inflationary pressure na naman. Uh, dahil sa mga moves na ginawa ng camera, I think, no? um, particularly the aggressiveness by which the House leadership looked into the issue of food inflation, um, uh, pababa ko ng pababa actually, ang um, inflation natin. And again, it, it really is because we're very deliberately and I think quite systematically addressing uh, food inflation. So, uh, ang, ang madaling sagot ho sa tanong ninyo is yes. Right? Uh, that's going to be the focus um, at the end of the day, I think, uh, moving forward because we need to sustain uh, having to control inflation um, because it's the entirety of our economic recovery na iniisip po ni Speaker Martin. No? Uh, madami hong ugat yan, madaming sanga, at lahat po yan tinatalakay at nag-iisipan actually ng House leadership. Um, so the, the first is really, uh, yes, it's going to continue. Uh, the second is, um, it really has to do with food security kasi Pag gutom po ang taong bayan, napakahirap. Wala hong ibang pwedeng pag-usapan. So it's a very basic need, no? Kung ang sikmura nila ay walang laman, wala na ho silang pakikinggan, di ba? Na iba pang uh, issue. So it's so basic and fundamental. It needs to truly be addressed. At hindi lang ho sa, sa, sa rice, halimbawa, but in all uh, the commodities, in our case, for example, sugar, no? Um, malaki hong issue ang food security. So it is going to be part of an important uh, concern for, for, for the House. Kasi kailangan na rin talagang siguraduhin na hindi masyadong mahal ang bilihin para may laman ng chan ng mawa Pilipino. Yeah, no, uh, yun nga, diba? Kung gutong ka, diba? may terbata yung na hungry, diba? Ganit siya. But um, even with that, the administration is also focusing on that. I think the, the DA said that the, their, their 2025, the 2025 budget be prioritized nila for uh, poultry, uh, high value crops. Uh, so it's not just Congress that's working on it. It's this administration. It's the various departments. Because uh, I think even uh, earlier the term of PDBM, uh, he said that uh, we want zero hunger. Sana. And in line with that, Congress is also looking into various uh, means, legislation to aid. So may support in focusing on food security. Meron tayong mga programa, di mong uh, bagong Pilipinas, yung di super, di ba? Meron mga ngayon, yung sa simple, sa farm, sa card. So it works hand in hand with the aid that we're giving to the people, giving to the people uh, with the priority of this administration. And also, the Congress looking into various measures and legislative measures uh, to make sure sustainable itong mga bagay-bagay na hindi lang puro assistance. Diba? It, it, so, it's a, it's a focus kasi uh, importante na na hindi na magutom ang taong uh, Well, I'm not really abreast in the, you know, the the issue of the NFA, but uh, in general, um, I think the House leadership is uh, doing very well in helping the executive, our president, kind of steer our country in a clean path. I see what, what I believe uh, President PBM wants is to impress into, into the Filipino people that this administration is not what his uh, oppositionists are saying, uh, corruption, etc., etc. And that's where the House comes in, to conduct investigations to provide the evidence needed on either corruption or incompetence, which leads to the detriment uh, of public service for the Filipino people. And what we hope to see in the coming months 
is action in part of the executive. What we don't want to see is what happened in the last administration. Na may mali, yung head of agency tinanggal tapos na-recycle sa ibang area ng, 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 ng gobyerno. Uh, we want to see a very clean, strong arm from the president himself na you did not do a good job get out of uh, my administration. Thank you. Uh, I want to acknowledge Mr. Degas from Abante Bonilla. Medyo ano lang po, lalo na po kay Kong Yuma Koro. Kong, I understand every year na lang nagkakaproblema yung mga Filipino Muslims na pumupunta sa Hajj. So, nasolusyon na lang ba ng NCMF yung mga naging problema before? Thank you. Uh, and uh, again, that's what I hope we won't be doing this uh, this coming, the remaining months that we have uh, working for this Congress, 19 Congress. Then every year, may bagong Hajj. Every after Hajj, my bagong investigation when it comes to this 19th Congress. So we had one uh, the, for the 2022 Hajj. We had an investigation for the 2023 Hajj. Now we have uh, we are now preparing for the 2024 Hajj. Kanina, before this press con, I came from the Committee on Public Accounts, and we were informed by the NCMF that there really is a danger that Hajj 2024 might not occur because of all of these uh, problems that's happening within the NCMF. Now, on the part of the House, we, uh, the Committee on Muslim Affairs is proposing a um, uh, possible solution. And that is the bills filed by Representative Mujib Hataman and Representative Siti uh, Amina Dimaporo. Uh, and that is the privatization of the Hajj. So you have to think about it. Are you, are my Christian Catholic brothers, sisters, if you want to go on a religious pilgrimage to let's say, to Israel, you know, to see where Jesus was crucified. Uh, why do you have to go through a government agency? Why does a government agency have to dictate where you will stay, and yung hotel mo, and yung transportation mo? No? Shouldn't it be freedom of choice? That is the bill that has been filed in the 19th Congress. Hopefully, it will be prioritized, uh, 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 and it will pass into third reading before we, we adjourn, uh, even better, before the summer. But that's one of the things that we hope to accomplish in the community of Muslim affairs, the privatization of the Hajj. Thank you. Ed uh, Mendoza from Manila Times. Good, mor good morning, Paul, uh, Congressman. I'd like to direct this first question for Kay Koki Kopin, because I'm a little bit of a question. You filed House Bill 9939, which uh, bans the dubbing of English movies to Filipino as a way for us to improve our English proficiency. But many sectors, including voice actors and fans of Filipino dub shows, criticize the move, as it would, could remove them of their livelihood. And one voice actor, I named him Jeff Otanes, he posted on Facebook saying that the industry should not be blamed on the low English proficiency of the Filipinos. What is your take on this, Kong? Tingin niyo po ba na kasira po ba sa dubbing industry itong batas? Ang talaga sa mga nagmamahal sa dubbing, the Filipino dub programs kasi yun lang yung way nila para makapanood ng mga anime, Korean drama, Mexican novela and all. Um, okay, <laughs> laruin ko lang ah, unang-una sa tanong mo, meron ng um, misunderstanding. So that might be part of the issue. Uh, it's the, the bill is actually designed to try to at least have a conversation so that we can balance the economic effects on creative industries, uh, particularly with the dubbing and voice actors, with the educational impact of a decrease in exposure for our population to English media. Okay. So, unang-una ko, kailangan malinaw sa atin na English media lang po ang pinag-iusapan. Ang Korean telenovela, ang Japanese anime, i-dub niyo ho yan kahit na gamit niyo kadaming beses at anumang klaseng lingwahe ang gusto niyong i-dub. Okay lang. The premise is that English is a official language of the Philippines and anything that we can do to increase exposure of our students and access of our general population to English language media can only improve you know, uh, English usage and English capacities locally. You know? But, of uh, malaki ho at ma, ma, 
malawak, no? ang continuum ng anong ibig sabihin ng English media. Uh, kaya nga ho, uh, sinulong namin ang uh, batas na yan, or potential measure, uh, because we need to have a conversation about the educational benefits versus the creative industry economic costs. No? Um, siguro naman hindi na I am also a champion of the creative industry you know, and the development of the creative industry and the creative economy. But we must have that conversation. No? And so it hasn't yet, I think, been scheduled or agenda for a hearing. So we look forward to as many of the creative industry stakeholders to make their voices heard during the committee hearing and to see if it, in fact, can be amended or tweaked, and whether or not, in fact, the committee decides that the creative industry economic costs far outweigh any educational benefit of such a measure. But let's have the conversation. Rather than, for example, the recurring uh, complaint naman, of another sector, in fact, of the creative industry, which is our BPO sector, that has been saying uh, for quite a while that the quality of our English capacities have actually slowly been going down over time. Yun lang naman yun, sir. It's not that complicated, uh, but it is going to be a discussion, I hope, at some point, uh, that will be coming up in the con in Congress. Okay, thank you po. My final question na lang po to everyone kasi nag-file po yung resolution ng Kabayan Block para investigahan ng limabas po sa Mandila Times na promise di umano ni former President Rodrigo Duterte na alisin ang share ng madre, coding an anonymous source. So what is your take on this po? Alisin, sorry, what? Alisin po yung ayun, ano, share ng madre. Again, it's very difficult to put ourselves on the shoes of the former president. Kaya nga, maging maganda rin na masagot ito ni former president para rin maliwanagan, no? Either nagkaroon ba ng miscommunication or is somebody putting words into his mouth and uh, it's best answered by him. He alone can shed light on this very important matter. Good morning. Hi, good afternoon po mga Kongs. Uh, although, since first time po ni Kong Benitez, sa kanya po yung question ko. Uh, Kong, uh, <coughs> the House adopted po yung Senate version ng NIR, yung Negros yes. and the Region Bill. Uh, how important is this po? Tsaka, habang inaantay po natin na malagdaan siya ng Pangulo, ano po ba yung uh, preparations po since may transition period? Sorry. Okay, so I, I would like to thank, obviously, the Senate, and I've done so before. Um, and hopefully the President does sign the NIR bill in the soonest possible time. Matagal na hong pinag-iisipan at at dinadasal ng mga taga-negros na magkaroon ng Negros Island region. Meron hong executive order dati na tinanggal din ni President Duterte because primarily of costs, right? So the new measure attempts to try to address the issue of cost by creating this transition period. And so there has to be a um, transition team as well and a task force um, comprised mostly of local stakeholders so that the LGUs themselves uh, and the provinces, the, the governors, no, can help uh, in the transition. Kasi kung ang, kung ang issue kasi is cost, halimbawa, ang tanong ay, okay, saan mo ilalagay ang uh, regional office ng CHED? Or saan mo ilalagay ang regional office ng DPWH? At sino ang uh, magbabayan? Diba? Kasi it's a budgetary issue. On principle, kasi I think everybody is in agreement. 
that bringing services more uh, to the people and making it more accessible can only redound in faster and better development. No? Um, so the question really is, who will shoulder the cost and for when? So yun ang pag-uusapan ngayon ng transition team. Diba? So mag-discussion mag, uh, sila, uh, depending on what the evaluation of uh, the efficiency no? and, and the cost benefit. Um, kasi sa, sa transition team, apat naman yan sila actually. There's the city of Bacolod, which is uh, a uh, chartered city. There's the provincial governor of Negros Occidental. There's the provincial governor of Negros Oriental. And there's the governor of Siquijor. Diba? So pag-uusapan ho nila kung sino po ang handa, sino po ang able, at sino po ang willing no, to, to help ensure that the budgetary issue that DBM uh, is very clear about and was the original reason bakit tinanggal ang uh, NIR dati, ay pwede namang masagutan. In other words, dahil may clamor ho from the ground na ibalik ang NIR, uh, I don't know of any or any real measure na lahat ko, as in lahat ng representatives uh, involved, ay pumirma as principal co-authors actually. No? Um, kasi nga ho, ganun ang clamor sa amin. Um, now that there's such a clamor, and since we are the ones who want it, the local government units and the local chief executives are willing to help in the transition, to ensure lang that it's viable and feasible, and if it is realized in the shortest possible time. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Anna Lisa Verano from Bombo Radio. Congarin, good morning po. Uh, this is a local uh, issue, Kong. Um, Exampling po sa West Visayas University, ang um, may mag ano daw po mag retake po daw ng exam ulit ang may 20,000 na mga estudyante uh, may wino po kung anong update dito ko ang bilang uh, isa sa mga board of regent na nasabi ng university thank you yeah that is correct no? um, uh, in fact I was the one who requested that that be discussed by the board of regents kasi may mga natanggap na tayong mga complaints just just a quick background there, no? So, ang Western Visayas, ang West Visayas State University is the premier university in the Visayas, no? Um, uh, this is the university sending out doctors to many areas in Mindanao. Um, napakaganda ng kanya academic uh, reputation. However, the recent admission test, I think the applicants were more, more or less around 21,000 plus. Nagkaroon ng anonymous na info na nagkaroon ng leakage. And then somebody already posted on social media. This was, I think, a brother of uh, one of the examinees. At uh, nakita nga natin na malaki ang posibilidad na nagkaroon ng leakage. This is a challenge kasi nga sa pagbago ng teknolohiya, merong mga nakakapagdala na ng mga camera or whatever. So, it's not, it's not yet 100% confirmed, but it's gearing towards the direction that during the a pilot testing, probably in Rojas or somewhere, may nag-picture ng pilot test. And that was leaked to the, uh, nauna kasi ang pilot testing, a few days ahead, na leaked siya dun sa ibang mga applicants. So whether it was sold or whatever, that is something that is currently under, uh, on undergoing investigation. And um, we have already requested NBI to come into the picture. Be that as it may, we cannot delay the decision of the student. So there are three factors here. Una, una, syempre, galit yung ibang mga estudyante, lalo yung mga alumni, no? because they don't want to taint the reputation of the university. And we have to preserve that. Because that has been carved and honed throughout many, many, many years. Pangalawa, yung iba naman na baka sana ay makakapasa, Eh, ma, ma out because of the quota that is also unfair for them and hindi naman natin na uh, minamaliit yung mga nakapasa pero hindi dapat deserving but the academic challenges that they will be garnering within the institution might also be difficult so maganda nang kesa na pupunta ka doon kasi hindi mo kaya maghahanap ulit na so andahan na talagang problema 
So during the board meeting that we had um, last um, Saturday, I believe, either Saturday or Friday, apologies, medyo nawawala na tayo sa mga senior moments, I, I put forward the proposal of uh, um, a possible retake. And everybody agreed, the uh, honorable chairperson of the Cubican Higher Education is also available. Kasi ibang mga proposals will take time. But that does not mean that the investigation will stop. Tuloy to the investigation kung sinong dapat managot, mananagot. But for now, we have to tackle the very first major impact. And that is yung nalilito, yung mga 21,000 plus applicants. So earlier this morning, I was in conversation with the university president. Um, chances are the retake will be mid-April. Uh, magkakaroon ng maraming venues. No? They will be coordinating with the local governments and the universities and other schools all throughout Region 6. Um, Kinark out lang yung areas, yung address ng mga mag-take dati. And mind you, at no cost. No? Walang, walang bayad yan. Thank you. Uh, for today's uh, last question, polling question from Isa Ben Daniel Mali from uh, GMADCWB. Inabot lang po siya ng uh, live report niya. To Congresswoman Mix, Viral ngayon sa social media ang isang teacher na nag-live sa TikTok at nanermo ng mga estudyante. Para kay Congresswoman, na madalas din trending sa kanyang content sa TikTok at FB, ano dapat ang isa alang-alang sa paggamit ng social media, lalo na kapag politician, teacher, or kilalang tao? Trending ba ba ako? Lahat po wala kami trending si Congresswoman ngayon. Oh. Trending to. Um, you know, uh, I would always say na my pagdating sa social media, you don't have to be an influencer, kahit that tayo, di ba? You have to be a responsible poster. <laughs> di ba? Uh, di ba? Uh, yung social media is a platform that you can use for the good or evil. It's either maninira ka ng tao, or gagawin mo, di ba, pang clickbait, or whatsoever. So, hopefully, di ba, gawin, namitin natin yung social media sa tamang paraan to, you know, educate, to uh, be a better person, to be a kinder person, at hindi yung mga paninira or fake news at lahat. Uh, so, ito, kung ginamit niya pang sermon, as long as it is, hindi siya nagmumura or wala siyang violations sa community guidelines, right naman niya yun. But I hope, di ba, you use a social media uh, as an avenue to uh, let others um, be educated and siguro be a better Filipino citizen kaysa manira-nira tayo. We all want uh, peace, especially this Holy Week. Sana, di ba, peaceful tayong lahat at uh, we, we go back to goodness na lang instead of hate. <laughs> so, yun. Siguro yun lang po. Um, ako, napanood ko kasi yung teacher na nag-viral sa social media. Ako, mix. Uh, malayong malayo siya sa pagtitiktok mo. Uh, medyo napakasakit talaga nung sinabi ng teacher. At hindi ko maintindihan ang context kung bakit siya napadpad sa social media. Um, para sa akin, napaka sakit nung mga salita niya, pananalita niya. Napaka uncalled for bilang isang guro. Bilang isang guro, dapat nag-practice talaga siya ng ng self-control. Dapat kumingan muna siya ng malalim kahit ano pa yung ginawa ng mga estudyante sa kanya bilang guro na ginagalang. Dapat hindi siya talaga nagwala. At uh, binigyan naman siya sa pagkakaalam ko ng DepEd ng tatlong araw para magpaliwanag. Siguro antayin na lang natin yung napakaganda niyang paliwanag. Uh, kasi matindi talaga yung mga pinagsasabi ng guro na na nag-viral at napakasakit ng mga salita niya. Tinawag pa niyang uh, huwag na natin ulitin. Pero to the effect na sinabi niyang uh, walang karapatan yung mga estudyante kasi mahihirap sila or something to that effect. Eh, kaya nga siya yung nagtuturo eh para matuto yung mga bata. Paano pa sila matututo kung ganun yung klase ng pagtuturo. So, siguro antayin na lang talaga natin yung magiging sagot niya. Pigyan natin siya ng three days, sabi ng DepEd. Pero kahapon pa yun, so two days na lang. 
Antayin natin. Salamat po. Okay. I I saw the video, not fully, but um, looking from the balcony, this can also be an eye opener. May mali ang picture, yes. There is also the impact of social media, yes. But we also have to look at the bigger picture. Baka yung ating mga public school teachers ay meron ding pinagdaraanan and wala dun yung avenue na yung mga needs nila o yung mental problems nila o yung kanilang acceptance dun sa mga pinagagawa ng ibang estudyante. Because it's a very big institution and uh, there should be a command or a chain where they can vent out their problems. And um, I, uh, syempre ngayon, marami, marami yung nagagalit sa kanya. At the, on one hand naman, hindi lang din natin alam, iilan sa ating public school teachers are feeling the same. Ano ba yung pinagmulan ng lahat ng mga ito? Where is she coming from? And um, nakakalabas ba sila ng boses sa, within the Department of Education? Is somebody hearing them out? Is somebody hearing their problems? Or is somebody supporting them? Ano ba yung mga bagay-bagay? What should be the feedback mechanism between our teachers and their administration? This is a very important thing that should also be looked into. Because for all we know, baka mamaya sa loob-loob niya ando na yung galit, pero hindi siya makalapit sa principal, sa regional director, or baka nakalapit siya, may problema na, pero kinocontain kasi hindi nila maipalabas sa central office. So, mind you, we need to look into this kasi baka mamaya it's not an isolated case. Nagkataon lang nalam, nalaman ng lahat kasi nilive niya. It's it, nilive niya, di ba? Was it live or somebody took it? I'm not sure. Nilive, nilive niya, di ba? Yun ang pagkaintindi ko eh. So, hindi siya by accident. It's intentional. There's a deeper message behind that. It's 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 venting out and nandoon and yung baka mama hindi na niya alam ano bang gagawin ko who can hear me out who can help me kasi minsan yung mga tao they want it to be viral because they need the attention or they want it to be viral because nobody is paying attention to them or is this a support na kailangan no 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 this is for for the sake of the teacher kasi it's a very challenging environment. And then we go back. Marami tayong mga government employees na nasa baba. Na ang dami nilang challenges. Marami nakakasuhan. Wala namang pangbayad ng abogado. Marami na pagbibintangan. Hindi sila makavent out. And that is where leadership comes into picture. And that is why this problem should be looked deeply by the Department of Education. Ano ba ang problema? Meron ba feedback mechanism? And mind you, we have also teachers na talagang may problema. I had an experience before na medyo nagkaroon ng problema, personal problem yung teacher. And pinag, kung sa galing ng, yung pinag, ano man niya, pinagbubuntungan. Yeah, pinagbubuntungan niya ng kanyang hinanakit ay yung mga estudyante, pinapalo niya ng payo. But because she was not like that before, I decided to come in and look into the situation. And I realized she had personal problems na kailangan natin intindihin siya. But at the same time, the children cannot suffer. The solution there was we requested her transfer to the regional office to do admin tasks. Para naman palitan muna siya as principal. And again, this speaks of a bigger situation, a wider situation, na dapat talaga tingnan ng liderato ng doctor. And solutions must be in place. No? Baka mamaya nasasakal siya doon, dito muna siya sa admin task, o yung namang support na doon, o yung baka meron tayong mga teachers na nahihirapan mag-cope kasi may mga challenges ang, challenges ang mundo eh. That's, that's normal. It's not a perfect situation now. Where will we place them? What is the solution of uh, that and on that matter? Bibigyan ba natin ng parang option to retire pero meron siyang hanap buhay na gagawin? Or ano ang magiging partnership nila with other institutions? That is where the management should come into play. Because at this point of time, nangangailangan ng nanay. 
nangangailangan ng nanay, both the students, the teachers, and the institution. Thank you. We invite our um, honorable speakers to share their uh, close, uh, brief uh, closing uh, statements. Can I start? Yes. Um, kasi actually, I was going to add on to what uh, Kong Janet said. Um, again, no, as part of EdCom 2, uh, to be quite frank, learning environment conditions are part of what our next year's oversight function is going to be one of the priority areas we will look into. Um, the lower house and Chairman uh, Roman has already passed a mental health and wellness uh, proposal, no? um, particularly for public schools. Um, the PISA results, as a matter of fact, show that the Philippines uh, scores very low when it comes to um, learning environment and school bullying and so on, from the students' point of view. Uh, but it also uh, apparently has great difficulty from the teachers' point of view. Um, so all of that is still part of what EDCOM 2 is doing now in terms of our oversight functions in order to ask precisely the kinds of questions, in fact, that uh, Congresswoman Garin has already pointed out. Um, um, ano lang naman sa uh, ngayon, I think as a closing statement, no, is that hindi uh, po to push ang aming trabaho. In fact, if we take on the same intensity no, of our work as we have in the last year and a half or so, uh, mas marami pa kaysa sa 57-58 letter priority bills no, ang magagawa po ng Congreso. As a matter of fact, kung titingnan mo ninyo ang uh, output on third reading um, ng, ng 19th Congress ay malinaw naman po that this Congress works hard, that this Congress has a larger uh, policy framework in mind that really has to do with improving the lives of Filipinos. No? Um, sana naman po sa ano, isang oras na kalahati o isang oras natin na pag-uusap, uh, malinaw rin po sa inyo yan at uh, hanggang po sa susunod, no? Kasi, gaya na sinabi ko ng aking umpisa, bahagi naman po talaga ng aming trabaho ay ang magpahiwatig sa inyo ng mga nangyayari po sa Kongreso. Kaya dahil ito po ay dahil din at para din sa inyo. Maraming salamat po. Um, sa pagpasok namin sa nating lahat sa Holy Week break, at sa pagpasa ng House of Representatives ng RDH-7, uh, umaasa po kami ng aming mga kaibigan sa Senado, maliban po, syempre napakahalaga din po talaga na maipasa nila ang um, LEDAC priority measures. Sana mapagtuunan na, na din po nila ng pansel yung RDH-6. Kasi nagko-close na po yung window nagpo-close na po yung panahon. At kung hindi pa natin ito gagawin ngayon, kailan pa? Babalik na naman tayo sa square zero, quite frankly. At gano'n na naman, parehong mga problema na naman ang tatalakayin, parehong mga, suli parehong mga issues na naman imbis na mabigyan na sana ng solusyon. So, yun po yung ating inaapila sa ating mga kaibigan sa Senado. Maraming salamat po. And uh, I'd like to uh, say thank you to our media friends. Um, and uh, I think the next time we'll probably may see each other again is uh, after the holy month of uh, Ramadan. So, I bless uh, I would want to greet you. <laughs> And a peaceful weekend, peaceful uh, holy week, and uh, uh, thank you again for your all your time. So we're just to add, no, with everything else. Ah, kanina ano ba sinabi natin? Mahirap maguto mga tao. Siguro guto mo tayong lahat. So thank you, everyone, and hopefully, na this holy week, no, we get to realize ano ba talaga mga priorities natin. 
tayo kami dito sa Congreso. Alam naman, I think it's very clear what our priorities are. Also our friends in the Senate. And, um, I wish everyone a peaceful and uh, very um, good uh, holy week. Maraming maraming sana for us. Dahil gutom na tayong lahat, help keep lang. It takes 20 minutes for our brain to realize na busog na tayo. Kaya huwag yung sundin ang ginawa ko. Kasi dati, siguro naman makakatestify dito si SDS Don Gonzalez. I was 20 pounds lighter before. Kaya lang, kapag di ba meron pinatawag takaw busog? Okay, parang takaw mata? na akala mo gutom na gutom ka, tapos kain ka ng kain, and then all of a sudden, para ka masusuka. Because it takes 20 minutes for your brain to decipher the information from your stomach. So pag kumain ka, hintayin mo, after 20 minutes, malalaman mo yung busog ka na. So, eat moderately. Thank you sa lahat na. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Majority Leader. Sir, sir, sir. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very supportive lang ako sa mga So maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. Ako, kagad ako ng speech, daro-araw ng speech. Salamat, salamat. Thank you, uh, Deputy Majority Leader Karina Pili. But Deputy Majority Leader um, Migs of uh, PBA Partners, uh, Chairman Kalin, Chairman Tico and Congresswoman uh, Pami for your participation. To everyone, maraming salamat po ulit. Abay. Thank you. Thank you.